is a some more notes from Mrs. Ernest. Uh, set to very exciting 80s music. Oh. 80s music. When you are left alone at your house to distance learn, you listen to 80s music. All right. So types of migration, let's talk about it. Never know. We can go back to the 80s music if something else comes up that's exciting. So types of migration, we're going to talk about mu movement of people. Uh, we've been talking about population geography, so this fits right in there. You're going to be looking at some stuff with refugees and doing a project on migration uh, next week. So the migration being a very important part of human geography, movement being one of the five themes. So what is migration? Migration is the semi-permanent movement of people from one place to another. Uh, remember, we're not talking about permanently moving. We're talking about semi-permanently moving. So migration tends to suggest that it's not permanent, but in a lot of cases it ends up being permanent. So we are talking about immigration versus emigration. So immigration is when people move into a new area. So people left Ireland during the potato famine and came to the United States as immigrants. And then you've got an emigrant, the person who moves out of the country. So they emigrated from Ireland and they immigrated to the United States. So why does this matter? Why do talking about migration matter to us? So when we're talking about population and who lives where, we have to combine that natural increase rate, babies being born and people dying and how a, how a country's population increases to the net migration rate, immigrants and emigrants. So it gives us a better idea of the changes in our population and how that works. So why do people migrate? Uh, so there's really four reasons why people migrate. You've got the economic reason for jobs. Uh, so people coming in and wanting to, um, to go to a new place to get a better job, to make something for their family. You've got social reasons, cultural reasons, whether there's family members already at a place where they're going to go to, or perhaps uh, religious reasons, uh, being near to people who look and act like you, that kind of stuff. There's political reasons why people leave. People are forced out of areas for a political climate. Sometimes we call them refugees. We're going to talk about that. Sometimes we call them asylum seekers. Uh, and then also there's the cat, in case you didn't hear that. I'm sure she'll talk to us again. And then there's natural reasons why people migrate. So that could be for, um, well, let's do a new music song this time. What's this one? All right, so natural reasons why people migrate are because, um, because there might be a better climate somewhere else. Uh, they want to go somewhere where it's nice. So, hey, I want to live closer to the beach. Hey, I want to live closer to the ocean. Or people who say to themselves, uh, I want to live up north near my cabin where I'm closer to the lake. Or some of your family members who are snowbirds who want to be down in Arizona during part of the year because they like that climate better than this one during the winter. So there are other types of migration other than the ones that people want to do. This tends to be ones that people are forced to do. Uh, and then we put refugees under this status. So human trafficking is one of them. Slavery and modern practices where people are sold or captured and held as property. Uh, this is uh, obviously something still going on, believe it or not, in 2020. Refugees are people who are forced to leave their homes because of economic, social, political, or natural reasons. So people who leave because they're starving or they don't have a job, people who are leaving because they're forced out because of their uh, religious or cultural background, political, they don't like the new dictator that's coming in, or in some cases it's a natural disaster like an earthquake or something that uh, makes you be a refugee away from that. Uh, some of the best cases or best interesting, most interesting cases came around like World War II when areas were bombed out and people moved out around Europe a lot. Uh, displaced people like at the end of uh, World War II with the Holocaust when all the Jews were freed from the concentration camps. They had to be refugees. They had no home anymore. They had to find a home after this four or five years of being held uh, as uh, prisoners. So other types of migration, ones you hear a lot about, illegal immigrants are definitely one that gets in the news. 
Uh, obviously, we have other things taking up our news right now, but illegal immigration is definitely always seems to be a hot topic when we talk about migration. Uh, people who migrate from one area or to the other without the proper documentation. So that's the key thing. We have lots of migration going on in this world that is perfectly legal and perfectly okay. We invite migrants into this country, but it's we tend to have an issue with people who are illegally undocumented in a country. There's a couple other different kinds of migration. Here's a couple of cyclical migration, cyclical meaning in a circle, in a cycle. Uh, seasonal migrants are one of those. People who come in for a period of time to harvest a crop, so farm migrants are one of those. A nomadic migration is tends to be one of those really old types of migration where there are different types of people still in the world today that follow herds, pasture land, grazing. Down here in the picture of Mongolia is a great example. Uh, types of migration, other types of migration, periodic migration, which seems like cyclical, but it's not quite. These are people who move for a small period of time and then return to their original place. It's, uh, time contract workers, people who uh, work for one part of the year in one place and then return home. Military service counts under periodic. College counts under periodic. Transhumanists are farmers who move up and down the mountainside, depending on the seasons. Those are all considered periodic. It's kind of an interesting topic. And that actually ends up being the end of my PowerPoint. Not quite the end of my 80s song, though. It's kind of coming here at the end. You should get to the very end when it goes like... Uh, so so uh, this is the end of this PowerPoint. So uh, there you go.